We can connect to an online data source using the data source's API connection if they have one available. We initiate an API query by sending a data request to the API's endpoint URL. The website's API protocol determines how we structure our data request, which typically includes additional query parameters and a unique API key or a token. The API connection then returns our requested data. We're going to obtain Microsoft stock data for its entire history as a publicly traded company. To get this data, let's use the World Trading Data Online Portal. This website allows us to connect to the API connection for free if we make under a few hundred requests a month. You first need to sign up for an account on the website. Remember to save your username and password for these websites, as we require the login credentials to set up the API connection in Power BI later. For the World Trading Data website, you can see we already have an API token automatically created for the account. In some websites, you may need to request the API key or token separately. If you look through their API documentation, you'll see several options for configuring API queries. I want to set up an API connection to return historical stock price data for Microsoft. We scroll down. We can see the historical numbers. You can see the HTTP request, as well as the query parameters that you'll need to set up this request. This particular query is pretty straightforward to set up because it's a single URL string containing the API endpoint, the query parameters, and your own API token. You can see here the structure of the API query. The API endpoint is the same for everyone connecting to this API. The query parameters pass the type of query we want to create, in this case, historical data, as well as the stock ticker for Microsoft into the API query. Lastly, we add our own unique API token to the end of the request. The other part of setting up this website's API query is our own username and password, which we will pass into Power BI later. I like to test out the API query to make sure the connection works first, before putting it into Power BI while the query editor supports a number of different data connections. It doesn't necessarily provide error feedback, in case the request doesn't work. My go-to website for testing API connections is the free Swagger Inspector tool you see on the screen. I take my API query, and I paste it into the request box next to the get. We can now hit the get button, and hit send. We confirm this query returns results, because we see the response box contains the returned data request. If the query doesn't work, Swagger Inspector will display error messages to point you in the direction of fixing or further researching the issue. Now in the Power BI service, we're going to add this API connection as a new entity in our data flows. We're going to create a new data flow for this API connection, and we select to add a new entity. You can see in the online services menu option there are several options for connecting to configured online web sources, such as Smartsheet and Salesforce reports. If you're looking for a more stable web connection than what we explored in the web connection video, in the other menu is where you'll find the API connection. We select Web API, and this takes us to our connection page. We paste our API query in full into the URL box, and we can now select if we want to use a gateway, and in this case, we can pass in our credentials. We hit next to see if this connection works.
Notice that we've selected the authentication kind as basic, and we pass in the user ID and password. We now see verification that our data connection works. In the next page, we notice that the API query doesn't necessarily return a data table. In the lower right, we see a warning that we can click on, and it indicates the query is not a table. We'll transform this data connection later in Power Query Online into a useful data table that we can use. For now, select Save and Close. We're going to name this data flow Microsoft Stock Price and hit Save. And you may run into an error message like this, or a warning message, if you are testing out the data flows. In this case, because our last web connection did not work, it's giving us a message. I'm going to select No, and we see that our web API connection is set up as a query entity within our new data flow. Connecting to Excel. Let's say that you work in an organization that, like many others, does a lot of analysis in Excel. Whether it's making estimates or creating forecasts, you now want to share this analysis with others. You can see an example Excel file that we want to leverage in a Power BI data flow on the screen. I randomly created sales numbers, and created formulas to adjust the monthly total sales based on how the running total of the actual sales compares to the forecasted numbers. If you select the Publish option from the File menu, notice that there are several options for publishing to Power BI. We can upload the workbook to Power BI as a workbook. And it works the same way it does as Excel Online. Or you can export the workbook data to Power BI as a dataset. We're going to connect to the actual file on the desktop in this example, so we're not going to select these options here. Those of you with access to the exercise files can download the Excel analysis to test this process on your own. You can see the name of the Excel file, forecasting, and the folder path it resides in on my own computer. We're going to copy this path and upload this same file path in our Power BI data flow. In the Power BI cloud, we're going to connect directly to the Excel desktop file. In the testing tables data flow that I've already opened, let's add a new entity. We select Excel from the File Options menu. And in the file path, we paste the path of the desktop file location. I need to add forecasting XLXS to the end. You can see there is an option for inputting a file path or a URL. If you are using a shared drive on the cloud for an Excel file, you can enter the URL link to the file here. We're going to select the Power BI Data Flows Testing Data Gateway. And this time we use the Windows Authentication, so enter the username and password that you use to log into your computer. We hit Next to link up to the file and save the credentials to our data gateway. Now we select the sheet or the table that we want to connect to. And this confirms that the Excel connection to our file path and our desktop works. From here we can select to transform the data. I'm going to keep the file name the same. So it's going to be the query name of forecast. And then check the warning messages. And last, I'm going to hit save and close. And there we have it. We now see the forecast Excel file loaded as a new query entity in our data flow.
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, you can find full tutorial of Power BI in the following videos, keep watching.